dee dum dee dum and we are recording guess what folks it's a sunday yes it fucking is time for a bit of what's up so um again because i figured this would probably happen because of the hump day updates on there's not a lot to cover because all the news has been transplanted to the hump day update but um there is a couple of things I'm going to be covering in the what's up um, today there. Some of you have probably noticed um, over the past, to be honest, probably since the new year. Uh, it's more than likely since the new year that I've been taking, uh, I've been taking a lot. I've been taking a lot of days off recently, uh, main, mainly due to health. Uh, and it is, it is the case that my, my health uh, has not been the best. Uh, since we went into 2020, um, it's not been the best since we went since we went into 2020. However, things are slowly recovering. Slowly recovering. Um, I, uh, I went into this that this what I'm doing here. The whole the whole video stuff on YouTube. Uh, I went I went into this realizing that it will sometimes have an effect on my health and the run up to the end of 2019 going into the beginning of 2020 when it got super super busy uh, that had a little bit of an impact but with the covid thing that went on um and is still going on coming to think of it but with the covid thing that went on with the lockdowns that happened in april may uh, and a big chunk of june it did mean that i could spend a little bit more time basically relaxing here at the house, um, which is what I was needing, to be honest, it was what I was needing, but things are on the mend, the doctors have got me on some, well the doctors, they put me back on the old medication, because one of the problems that was happening uh, a couple of weeks ago and last week, was the new medication simply wasn't working, they, they like to use me, like, they, they like to use me as a guinea pig now and again, just to try out new medications, here you go Vic, try those, they're probably going to be worse than the old ones, but try them anyway, but uh, yeah, back in the old medication again, um, also, again, health stuff, some people have commented um, when I'm when I'm doing build videos, uh, especially when doing build videos, I take the dripper or the tank out from under the camera for extended periods of time. Um, again, the eye problem. Now, normally, normally, I usually get I usually get the um, the quick Fuchs dystrophy treatment uh, done every year to year and a half. But because of COVID nineteen, all outlying, all outlying um, um, NHS, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not treatments. I think it might be treatments actually, but all outlying treatments for an outpatient scenario, which is what this is. I'm only in for a day. Uh, have basically been cancelled. Like all, all non that's the word i'm looking for non-essential treatments have basically been cancelled so i'm struggling right now with the eyesight i'm not ashamed to admit it i am struggling right now with the eyesight and you're going to be seeing that happening a lot during build videos coming up for the next couple of months now the hospital that i usually get the treatments at uh, they did send me a letter out last week saying we're slowly getting things back to normal again uh, we will be contacting you very soon, probably sometime this month. Uh, or we'll be contacting you sometime this month uh, to set a future date for your eye operation. So hopefully they get it done before the end of summer. Probably not by the end of summer because we're in July already. Um, beginning of autumn? I hope they get it done before the end of the year. Put it that way because... The longer it goes on for, the worse the condition actually gets. Um, there is self-treatment that you can do um, to help tone down some of the worst aspects of the dystrophy, but it does need that full treatment. It does need it. That does need that full treatment. I usually get I usually get it done in one of the Glasgow hospitals. Although um, I think it was a couple of years ago, I ended up getting it getting it done in uh, Air Hospital. But it's usually Glasgow. It's usually Glasgow that I end up going to. Um, so, just in case you're wondering why I keep 
pulling the dripper deck or the tank deck away from under the cam. It's because I'm doing this with it, so I can see what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> it's okay. I can see what the fuck I'm doing when I'm actually coiling or wicking something. Wicking's the bastard. See, wicking something when your vision's not a hundred percent. It's it's tricky. Coiling something is relatively easy, but wicking. If you don't have your, if you do, if you're visually impaired. Wicking can be tricky sometimes, especially if you, especially if it's certain styles of tanks. Not so much drippers. Drippers are easy. Certain si styles of tanks which need a certain style of wicking. If you're visually impaired, that's a tricky one. That can be a very tricky one to get right. Um, very tricky one to get right. It's also, it's also one of the reasons that. Whenever I speed up a build on a tank or on a dropper, I always slow it down when it hits the wicking stage. Even for a dropper, I slow it down when it hits the wicking stage, just for the people that are visually impaired, so they can see how that particular tank or dropper, especially tank, is wicked in order to avoid a flood or a dry hit. Building something, if you're visually impaired, is relatively easy in the grand scheme of things. Wicking, that's the tricky part. That is the tricky part. So, I thought, oh, um, uh, Kelpie with the Q-Mini, and I've got some of this crack in it. I like the new labels from Rochard Project, by the way. Black Vine, and I'm just about to pick up my branded Q-Mini with another Kelpie with my peach custard in it. And this cog has got... Um, it's not that, because that bottle's ran out. What the hell's it got in it? Oh, actually, it does have this stuff in it. There's a little bit left. Simply Leaf Caribbean Cream, which is um, a net tobacco from the fine folks over at the Juice Cabin, ran by the one and only Mr. Les Picken. It's, it's a light cigar. It's not a heavy Cuban. It's a light panatella. So it's not a heavy Cuban. Rather nice, actually. Been thoroughly enjoying it. Thoroughly enjoying it. Mm. Thoroughly enjoying it. Very, very good naturally extracted tobacco. Uh, that's the cog uh, with the SQ Mono, just for the people that are wondering what the fuck I'm vaping on. So that basically covers it all, folks. Uh, what a night. Because I'm struggling for stuff to talk about in the What's Up now since the Hump Day update came out. What I might end up doing is when the Hump Day update goes out on Wednesday, I might likely cover one of the news topics and then hold that news topic back for a rant during the what's up just one topic from that bunch of the week and that way i can that way i can talk about news and well a little bit of news at least at the beginning of the what's up because because all the news got shifted over to the hump day update the content for the what's up the beginning part of the what's up that's kind of lacking right now because there's fuck all to talk about because i've talked about it all on wednesday so <laughs> I kind of figured it would happen, but I didn't think it would happen this quick. So that that might be what I end up doing. Also, um, if you haven't watched the Hump Day update, go and watch the first five minutes of it. At the end of this month, I think it's uh, Friday the 31st, at the end of this month, Vapor Round magazine is teaming up with a whole bunch of manufacturers over in Shenzhen and a whole bunch of vendors to basically set up an online virtual 3D expo. It's called Voxpo. Um, I covered it mainly in the Hump Day update last Wednesday. And it's it's basically an online expo. Now, for more details, I advise you to head over to the Voxpo website to figure out how it's going to work, uh, figure out how it's going to work, what you're going to need to get in. They did assure me that it's going to be browser-based, right? There may be a tiny download, some kind of app or something that Google Chrome will automatically download, but it will be a browser-based experience probably running through HTML5. It's not going to be Flash because Flash has been depreciated and basically discontinued, so it's going to be running through HTML5, like those browser games 
that a lot of people play on Facebook. That kind of similar idea, a very simple graphical 3D engine that will run within your browser so you don't need to download a client like Second Life or something like that. The, here's the thing, right? I'm going to go on a tangent a little bit here, but th there was... It's no secret I like to play Second Life now and again. Everyone thought Second Life died, like, in 2015 or something. It hasn't. It hasn't. I mean, apparently, Second Life Linden Lab, or Linden, is it Linden Research, the company behind Second Life, was actually recently taken over. Um, they, they were bought over by an investment company. So they are making money. Uh, they're making a lot of fucking money, actually. But Second Life is basically... it's. It's basically Minecraft for adults. That's the best way to explain what fucking Second Life is. It's Minecraft for adults. You basically build the world from the ground up. 99% of the items that you see within Second Life, the game, has been built by its residents. It's been built by the players that play Second Life. But you walk around with a 3D avatar. Full 3D avatar. And... You're also able to construct, in a game environment, the environment that you walk around in. So I had a couple of a couple of vendors actually contacted me two weeks ago. Yeah, it was two weeks ago, saying, "Vic, can you build a replica of the NEC, or at least two of the halls from the NEC, in Second Life?" And I went, "Yeah." That's easy enough. I mean, the NEC is just a big tin shed with a roof on it. That's all the NEC is. It's a big tin shed with a roof on it with extractor fans. And it was like, and I think I know where they're going with this. I know where they're going with this. And then it was like, Vic, can you build 340 to, or 300 to 400 <laughs> booths? And I was like, uh, no, 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 no. Because not only do you have to build the booth, right? Not only do you have to build the booth, you have to sign the booth with, with the labelling. You've got to sign the booth. You've got to set up the booth with whatever the company, let's say Geekvate, for instance, let's say Geekvate want representations, 3D representations of their latest mod tanker dripper sitting on the counter. I've got to build that as well. And I've got to do that 350 times for 350 different companies within a week. That was the time span they gave me. No, no, that's fucking impossible. It is literally impossible to do. The other problem with Second Life, even though Second Life, if if a builder was given a month, at least a month, to prepare a big sim-sized chunk of land for an expo of that size, they would need a month. But the other problem is the way that land is done in Second Life, you can buy a region, which is a 256 by 256 meter, this is Second Life meter, plot of land. Now that sounds like a lot, but the problem is you're only allowed 50 people on that chunk of land. Certain circumstances, you can punch it up to 70 people on that chunk of land. You can't run an expo on that. You can't. Not with, not with a max cap of 70 people. So what would need to happen is the expo would need to be extended out over a range of regions, which adds even more cost onto the overall running. It's impossible to run a vapour expo inside Second Life. It's impossible. Which tracks back to the Voxpo, because what Voxpo are doing is something different to what other companies were trying to do with having their with having their um with having their expo inside an actual downloadable platform like second life or like something else the way that the folks at vapor and are going with this they're going with it browser based which means a lot less overhead a lot less overhead um with the computer power needed to actually run the event because it's browser based the overheads for graphical uh, the overheads for graphical looks and the overheads for the ping back between the main server that's hosting all of this and the end user's computer is negligible 
compared to what the pingback would be with 70 individual avatars running around a single region in a 3D graphical world called Second Life. The lag, for all you people that are into gaming, the lag would be fucking horrible. You would end up rubber banding everywhere. It's one of the major problems with Second Life right now. You can't pack a region up, it just starts lagging because the servers over at Linden Labs side of things, they just can't handle the traffic. You just can't handle it. So there we go. Link to the Voxpo is down there. Um, I am going to be, I, I'm, I think I'm going to be, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be in there. Um, there's Apparently there's going to be panels um, and not seminars, it's more like panels, I think, where a bunch of people talk about stuff and things and you can sit in and listen to what the bunch of people are talking about. I don't know how that's going to run. I honestly don't know how they're going to do that within the browser-based system. If it's going to be piped in via Skype, which it probably will be, to be honest, it'll probably be piped in via Skype. I don't know how they're going to run that. I think they're they're going to be phoning me up next week, I think, to finalise the details. But, link to the Voxpo down there in the description. Um, the event, apparently, is going to be running for about a year. But over the course of the year, there's going to be three major events over the weekend so everyone can congregate. But the actual system is going to remain open for a year. So it's going to be a year-long online expo kind of deal that they're running here. Anyway, what else is there? Cover the health stuff. Cover the Voxpo. Ah, it's not going to be a big change. But some of you have probably seen I've been getting I've been getting new filming stuff in for the studio. The first thing I got in was a camera slider. It was great. It wasn't an Edelkron because they're too fucking expensive. A fucking grand they want for a slider? What? I could buy a 4K fucking camera for that. No, it wasn't Edelkron. It was a great video maker. GVM, I think the company's called. It was a great video maker motorized slider. Um, I got my hands on that. That's why you're seeing the camera track thing going on at the intro and the newer style of the vid. So that camera slider is going to be used a little bit more for more B-roll shots and for a new what's inside the box intro for the table cam section. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be offloading the beginning of the table cam section into a B-roll slide to introduce the rest of the table cam section. Now, don't worry, the don't vape in a bin is still going to appear because if you look at the base of most, not all, but if you look at the base of most tanks and drippers, uh, just look at this, if you look at the base of most tanks or drippers, you will actually see, come on, you will actually see there, don't vape in a bin. Because that, that sign is actually included on practically most tanks and drippers. You generally don't tend to see them on mods. But don't worry, the uh, don't vape in a bin catchphrase is still going to be around. Albeit a little bit cut down from what it normally is. But what I'm trying to do is basically tidy up is one of the things. That's one of the words basically. But what I'm trying to do is tidy up and tighten up some of the recording work that I'm doing uh, for, th for the reviews and cutting out the what's in the box bit at the beginning of the table cam means that when I hit record, I can go straight into the item that we're having a look at. Straight into it. Don't need, what, don't need to show people what's inside the box because the B-roll shot at the beginning of the table cam section is going to be doing that for me. Um, it's all about It's all about trying to tidy up and more importantly for the back half of the review shorten down the way that the reviews are being done because I have noticed again mostly because I'm not really feeling all that well and I'm, I'm not timing myself the way, I, the way I should but I have not got the hiccups all of a sudden I have noticed that the reviews have started, started to climb up to the 25 and 30 minute mark and what I'm trying to do now is cut the table cam and cut the back half down to the table cam being round about five minutes, the way it should be, and the back half being being ten minutes. So I'm trying to make the video 
run for round about 15 to 20 minutes for a review. It's doable, but it's going to be tricky. It's going to be very tricky because I've got a nasty tendency of rambling quite a bit when it comes to the back half of the review once I finish the table cam stuff. But there's a few plans in place to stop me from rambling as much at the back half of the review. Anyway, I think that basically covers everything. Yeah, I think it does. Uh, on to the... F in fact, hold on. I've got a shout-out. Did the shout-out come first? Or did the WhatsApp come first? It's been that long since I've actually done the shout-outs and the WhatsApp. I can't fucking remember now. You know what? We're going to go to the to the first looks and table camp stuff first. Then we'll do the shout-out. Yes, So, on to the first look. So, what stuff has came in this week? Well, uh, I know that a few of the American reviewers have already got their review up of this, but again, Dove Portal are usually a little bit slower at sending out stuff to the reviewers here in the UK. This is the Blotto Mini by, of course, Vaping Bogan and Dove Port. Now, if you've got the original Blotto, the, the only major difference between the Blotto Mini... Are you going to come out of the damn box? Come on. Come on. There we go. The only major difference between the original Blotto and the Blotto Mini is the size. Now, I'm not talking about the size of the deck. I'm talking about the size of the outside of the tank because the deck on the Mini is basically the same as the deck on the original. What Dovepo have managed to do is they've managed to shrink down the outside of the tank, but keeping the original internals of the original Blotto, which means if you've got the original Blotto and you get your hands on the Mini, you're going to have the same deck, which means you'll be able to pop your favourite coils in there. Let's pop this out here and have a look. And as you can see, it's it's the... Wow, this is went dark. What's up with this light? Hold on. I've been having problems with this ring light recently. Don't know what the hell it's doing. There, there we go. But there we go. It's it's the it's the blotto deck that we all recognise. There it is there, and there's the inner chamber. Right there, and what they've managed to do is shrink down the outside, but keep the internals relatively the same. But it is a much more smaller tank compared to the original Blotto. Top fill, as always, uh, on uh, on a bayonet cap fitting. And that's the Blotto Mini from Dovepo. And, of course, designed by Mr. Vaping Bogan. Moving on, we've got something from Vapefly, which is not designed by the German 103 team for a change. It's this. Wow, look at that reflection. It's this. It's the Vapefly TGO pop to go. I was so tempted to say to go, but it's actually TGO pod mod and it stands for touch and go. So yeah, it's one of those pod mod doohickeys that a lot of these companies are starting to do now. If we pop this thing out of the box, I mean, this will be, this will be Vapefly's first major design that doesn't have the German 103 team's name attached to it. So if we pop this out, this is a Fairly chunky bit of kit, this. Fairly chunky bit of kit. Now, this is a fingerprint sensor. And if we had, if we look here, set up admin fingerprint, power on the device, press fire button to enter fingerprint setup stage. Please register two admin fingerprints before using TGO or it can't work. So it's a full fingerprint lock system which is what this thing here is now this didn't this this came in not that long ago i haven't had a real chance to have a deep dive look at the thing uh, i'll be i'll be spending a lot of time with this over this coming weekend but the fingerprint thing is rather interesting so if we have a look around this what we've got here is the air come on focus what we've got here is the airflow control that goes in to the actual pod tank system itself. There's your pod, big gaping hole where the coil actually goes. Airflow control is on there on the side. And if we look here, it says push. So what we need to do is pop that in. 
that slides over and that's how you fill the whole tank thing up and then you've got the actual mod part down here now there is a fair bit of weight to this because zinc alloy the whole thing's a massive zinc alloy shell and you can see how thick the shell is by the top of the actual mod part now they say pod mod if we dig deep into the stuff down here at the base we don't have a 510 adapter now normally with these pod mods you do get some kind of 510 adapter whether Vapefly are going to be releasing the 510 adapter at a later stage in time where you put the 510 onto here and then you can screw your tank on top, I don't know, but you'll notice that the, the actual bodywork, if we have a look at that here, there's the battery connections there, which is round about at the D side of things. So the main connector part's probably moving down to about here, I'm guessing. You've got the screen the up, down, and the charge along the front, which means most of this part here, going from the back end of the Vapefly logo to here, and then up, most of that is taken up with a LiPo. So yeah, there is a fair bit of milliamp hour going on in this actual pod mod, but the whole thing of the fingerprint sensor has got me a little bit worried because fingerprint sensors on any mod have been notoriously tricky to get right so i'm going to be putting this fingerprint sensor through its paces as we get into this weekend so that was the tgo pod mod or the touch and go pod mod by the folks over at vapefly pop that there and then pop the box back on so what have we got next we have got two is it two yeah, we do. We have, in fact, there's one missing. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. I was wondering why I was only looking at four boxes and it should have been five. We've got two bits of kit from Freemax. This is the smaller one first. And let's drop down that light because it's becoming really bright again for some reason. This is the Freemax uh, Maxis 100 watt mod. If we pop this open, Oh my god, would you look at the state of the panels in this. And here's the thing, this side is fine. Then they done the... Why? Why did you do that with the other with the other panel? But we have got the... Uh, we have got the Freemax Firelook 3 tank that comes in the kit. Screw that on. And as you go, oh my god, how horrid could you make a... I'm not, I'm not saying a thing. Some people might think that that, that looks good. Some people might think that looks good. I don't, however. This looks excellent. I like that. But then they've done that. But yeah, this is the Maxis 100 watt kit. It is a single battery mod, as you can see. Uh, designed by Freemax, and they're using the new variant of the FM chip, which is what Freemax have come up with for their line of mods. Smart load. Load at will. More about that when we head into the review of this thing at a later date. But yeah, it's, it's a single battery mod with the Freemax Firelook 3 and the Firelook range of tanks have been generally pretty damn good. But if we pop that to one side and get rid of all this box stuff and pop it over there, we've also got this. These were released at the same time. Single battery variant, but now you've got the Freemax 200 watt bigger brother in this that you don't generally tend to see this a single battery and a dual battery version of the same mod being released uh, oh god serious somebody needs somebody needs to have a word with freemax's designers not so much the designers of the mods but the designers of the colorations of the mods so what we've got in here in this box is the MPR2 tank, I thought they would have put the Fire Look 3 in here as well, but different variation, different variation of the existing tank. This one's called the MPR2 tank with a poly, it's not polycarbonate, it's, um, it's acrylic with an acrylic tank, which I think is a rather odd decision to go down. I'm looking in the box here and I'm not seeing, see this is where the spare glass should have been. 
I'm thinking they got rid of the glass and they put in they put in a thinner acrylic. Is there anything in? No, there isn't. They, they put in a, a, a thinner acrylic shell to bump the capacity down to two mil. I thought they would have put a fire look in with this kit, but they didn't. That's a very odd decision. Very odd decision. But yeah, so we've got this kit here with its offset 510. And if we pop the back of this off, dual battery. Again, the guts of it, FM chip, Maxis one, smart mode at the top. It is literally the bigger brother of the 100. So what Freemax have done, they've decided to release, no, oh, this door's not on right. They've de There we go. They've decided to release a 100 watt single battery and a 200 watt dual battery of the same Maxis line. The big letdown for the dual battery is they didn't put the Fire Look 3 in with it. They put this odd plastic tank thing in itself. I wonder if they, st I wonder if they take the same coils. There's a thing. Because if this takes the same fire loop coils, then that's fine. Because the fire loop coils are pretty damn nice. Let's pot. No, I don't think it does. Nope. Wow. Good grief. This. This reminds me of the um, the old Horizon tank coil. Look at the size of this. You don't see coils that big these days that much. Dual, co uh, dual core, 0.2 ohm, 60 to 90 watts. That's a big coil. Reminds me a lot of the old Horizon coils from way back in 20, 2018. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have seen this tank on top of this mod as well. But uh, instead we get that. So the Maxis range. 100 watt and 200 watt. Very interesting idea from the folks over at uh, from the folks uh, over at Freemax to design two mods at the same time, one with one battery, one with two, and release them both at the same time. You don't get a lot of companies doing that. So let's pop all these back in the box again. That's the 200 water. Like that. Come on. There we go. And the 100 water, to be honest, I'm, I'm leaning more towards the 100 water because of that tank. That's why I'm leaning more towards the 100 water. Um, haven't had a chance to check out the tank that's on the 200 water to see what the coil's like, but judging by the size of the coil and the design that I kind of recognize, it's gonna have pretty damn good flavor, but way too much airflow. So that was the Freemax Maxis range. One more thing to look at, and it's this. They also sent the Odin Mini in along with the Blotto Mini, and I've been looking forward to getting my hands on this. Anyone that watched um, this week's uh, UK Vape Show would have seen me using this. This is the Dovepo Odin Mini. And it's basically the original Odin shrunk down to a mini size. So what you've got in here is of course your battery door. Come on, out you come. You've got an 18650 adapter in there, but the main battery holder itself can take a 20 or 21700. You've got a DNA 75C chip in here, and what you're basically looking at is a shrunk down version of the original dual battery Odin. That's basically what they've done, but it's a very comfortable little mod to hold. Very comfortable little mod, and I've been thoroughly enjoying using this with a Kelpie RTE sitting on top or a, you know, medium ohm stock coil, or medium sub-ohm, should I say, stock coil sub-ohm tank, like around about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 ohm coil, so I don't need to push the 75, the DNA 75, all that much in here. The only thing that I'm not happy about, though, is they've kept the cut-ins so you can actually look into the battery compartment now. The one thing that I've noticed about these cut-ins here is for dual battery, big, beefy mods, these cut-ins look fine. But for smaller mods, they don't quite look right, having huge, big, gaping holes in the side of the mod. So I'm, I'm not sure about that. I'm not a fan of the cut-ins on the single. I th if they were going to make cut-ins on the, the, the Odin Mini, I would have made the cut-ins a lot thinner 
than what these are. But I suppose what the cut-ins are also doing is giving air into the battery compartment in order to keep the battery temperature down as well. But there we go. Odin Mini, cracking little mod. Don't wait for the review, just go and get one. It's a cracking little mod, this thing. And that was the first looks for this week, folks. You'll notice something missing. There hasn't been a pod. Or, for that matter, a traditional AI. Oh, I mean, okay, we've had, we've had a pod mod in, but that doesn't really count as a pod kit. That's a mod with a pod tank stuck on top. But yeah, there hasn't been a pod uh, a pod sent in this week and to be honest last week as well even though I never actually done a uh, I never actually done a what's up last week there wasn't any pod sent in last week either it looks as if the pod market is now basically shutting down uh, because over the past three or four weeks with the emails that I've been getting in from companies there's literally been less than a handful less than a handful that have said we've got a new pod coming out do you fancy reviewing it for us i'm expecting a couple of pods in this week coming but it's definitely slowed down it's definitely slowed down and now we're seeing more and more companies moving away from the pods and away from the aios and like freemax going back to single and dual battery mod kits again which I'm, I'm more than happy with because I am getting fucking fed up with pods. Anyway, that's it for the first looks. And in today's review, guys, we are having a look at Zeus Juice. Yes, Zeus Juice. <laughs> Been a while since we've done one of these. Um, I think the last one was, I think it was the original black that I did. Uh, but we wow, I am so out of practice at doing shout outs. I was right, by the way, that's the order it does come in. It's first looks first, then the shout out. So, because the UK Vape Show is now back again, as if you didn't know that already, because the UK Vape Show is now back and it's all settled in, uh, I can now start doing the shout outs which is basically shouting out the guest that was on the Thursday previous show. And who we had on last Thursday was, of course, that wrong, wrong way, Vic. It's that, it's, it's that way. Who we had, poke, poke. Who we had on was vaping with CJ. Um, CJ is one of the relatively newer crop of reviewers here in the United Kingdom. Uh, we managed to get him up to damn near 500. Yeah, damn near 500. Um, the way that... YouTube is doing the, the subscription thing now. If they notice a flood of subscribers going in, they actually check and then they get rid of all the dead accounts. So I think we had them up slightly over 500 and then YouTube did a sweep to get rid of all the dead accounts. So he's now back down to like 490 something or other. Yeah, 490 is that right now. So link to CG's channel is down there in the description. Go and offer him a little bit of support, folks, because it's 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 a lot harder. A lot harder setting yourself up as a, a as a reviewer now on the scene, considering there is so many reviewers here in the UK now, compared to what it was like when I first started in March of 2014. There was nowhere near the amount of reviewers there is now back in 2014 so starting up as a reviewer now is hard that's one of the reasons it's one of the major reasons actually that the uk vape show will generally bring on new reviewers now and again we'll have a big name on but generally speaking we, we like we like to bring on newer people onto the scene you know to get the word out about them get more eyes onto their videos that kind of thing so right now cj is doing a mix of uh, right right now cj is doing a mix of mainly juice reviews with the occasional hardware review chucked in for good measure again because he's a relatively new channel he's concentrating on the juice reviews first to build up the channel before he starts hitting uh, before he starts hitting the hardware reviews later on so Too much peach. So I, I'm 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 doing a, a a redo of the peach custard, and there's too much peach. Can barely taste the custard. Too much peach. But yeah, 
link to CJ's channel is down there. Go and give him a subscribe, especially if you're interested in juice reviews, which is something I don't do on the YouTube channel now because all the videos that were struck were all to mainly to do with juice reviews. So I'm uh, avoiding the juice reviews on the YouTube channel now. If, I, if I'm ever going to do a juice review, it's going to be done on the Facebook channel page for vaping with Vic and on BitChute. The juice review won't actually go up on this channel for obvious reasons. Yeah, I don't want to end up getting struck into fucking oblivion like I did the last time. Anyway, that was vaping with CG. Link is down there on... I can't remember what the fuck's next. It's been, it's been that long since I've done a full what's up, including the shout out. I think it's the... I think it's the box away next. Yeah, it's the box away. It's the end of the what's up. I am so out of practice. Can you tell? Can you fucking tell people? I am so fucking out of practice. It's shocking. On to the Patreon subscribe star and YouTube member box away next because it's a box that's filled with stuff that goes away. So we're back with the Patreon subscribe star and YouTube member box away for the people that are relatively new to the channel. This channel is supported by people on Patreon, uh, YouTube members, and of course subscribe that uh, subscribe star. And what they basically do is give a monthly donation. It could be anywhere from a dollar upwards, and that money help helps to keep vaping with Vic independent, which means I don't take any money from the manufacturers in order to do the review. They basically send the item in and I review it. No money changes hands unless they want a fast track. In other words, they want the review done within seven days of the item approaching. But even then, it's a negligible fee that I'm charging them. But uh, in order to keep this channel as independent as I possibly can, it relies on Patreons, subscribe stars, and the folks on the YouTube members that click the join thing underneath the video. So every week, every Sunday at the end of the What's Up, I generally just have a rake through the storage cupboard, which is the office next door, essentially. I rake through the storage cupboard and just pick up general random items to chuck in a box and send it away. Hence, box away. It's a box that's filled with stuff that goes away to whoever's name I pick from the list. So, up for grabs from the last What's Up is one of these. I think it's the last one I've got of these, actually. A smodest pick. I generally chuck in one or two podcasts into these into these box aways as well. So, if the, if, if the recipient of the box has someone that they think they could help give up smoking... They've got a couple of pod kits in there to give them, so I've got an Osmodus Pike. I have got the Watofo Cog RTA in gold. Cracking little tank, this. Thoroughly enjoying the cog. Mm. One of the best mouth-to-lung RTAs coming out this year. Cog RTA from Watofo, and of course, suck my mod. We have the Vapor SO Target PM80, a sub -ohm pod mod, and there was a lot of people wondering about this because, um, put you there, because when I was reviewing the mesh deck for the Titan, Steam Crave actually sent in another Titan. I had one already. I think they forgot I had one, but they sent in another one. So the one that they sent in, unused, is up for grabs. The Steam Crave Aromamizer Titan RD. This is a fucking big tank. Look at the size of this. Out you come. Look at the size of that fucking... It's a huge tank. You can put a gold... Well, you can't put a gold... Don't put a goldfish in your tank, folks. No, no, not this kind of tank anyway. Like an aquarium tank, that's me. Don't put a goldfish in this. Anyway... <laughs> that's going to be a new catchphrase now. Don't put a goldfish in your RTA. Anyway, yeah, Titan. That's a big tank. So I thought, well, I'm not going to be using it because I've got one already, so I may as well just pop this in the box away queue uh, for the folks on Patreon, subscribe star, and YouTube members. So up for grabs, Titan RDTA. There's no mesh deck with this. It's the standard Titan package, because I'm keeping the mesh deck for myself. <laughs> with Tofu Cog, uh, the Vaporesso Target PM80. Yeah, it's the PM80. And an Asmodus Pike, and all that is up for grabs to one lucky winner. I'm going to pop this over there. 
That's all being sent to one lucky winner whose name I'm now going to pull. Here we go. Uh, this is everyone's names from Patreon, YouTube members and Subscribestar all listed up. And the winner is... Paul Sp Sprout? Oh, before the A. It's Sprout. Paul Sprout. I recognise that name. I think you're a member of... Are you, are you a member of the Facebook group, Paul? I recognise that name from somewhere. Anyway, Paul Sprout. Paul, you've just won all that that I showed. Right, so what I need you to do, Paul, if you're on Patreon, or, you, uh, or not YouTube, if you're on Patreon or subscribe star. You don't need to do anything, Paul. Just sit there and wait for me contacting you either on Patreon or subscribe star. However, if you're signed up for the YouTube member system, Paul, you'll need to contact me because I've got no actual way of contacting you via the YouTube member system. So you're going to have to contact me. Use the email address that you signed up for on YouTube, right? That's one thing you've got to do if you're on YouTube members, Paul. Use the email address that you signed up for on YouTube. That way I can, you know, like, match things up and basically to make sure it's you and it's not someone pretending to be you. So there you go, Paul. You've just won all that stuff that I just showed. What's up for grabs next? Where the fuck's my mouse went? There it is. What's up for grabs next week? Well... There is a severe lack of mods. I'm going to warn people now. There's, there's a severe lack of mods on the box away shelf. It's all bloody AI. There's a fucking load of AIOs that I need to get rid of um, up at the studio. For, so for the next couple of months, there's going to be a lot of AIOs with a couple of mods now and again and a couple of rebuildables thrown in. So what we've got up for grabs next week is the Oxva Origin. It's a pretty decent little uh, little 18650-based pod slash AIO kit. It's been getting a load of good reviews, and I gave it a good review as well. So I've got the Oxfa kit here. We've also got... <sighs> Unfortunate colour, although Bunny might like this. The Vapor SO Gen Nano in a very, very deep purple colour very deep purple colour. So we've got the Vapor SO Gen Nano up for grabs. We also have the Artery Nugget. It's another AIO, but it's a bloody big AIO with dual 18650s, right? Dual 18650s. And you can buy the 18... Uh, not the 18650. You can buy the 510 plate that goes on top of this to basically turn it into a dual battery 200 watt mod. I don't think the 510 plate is included in the box, however. So you're stuck with it in AIO format right now. Artery Nugget is also up for grabs. We've also got chucking in a pod kit so the, the recipient of this box can give it away to someone that wants to give up smoking. The Suwarin Shine. I've still to review this, actually. I think the review for this is up next week. I think it's next week it's up. So Orange Shine, decent little pod kit. And finally, we've got... It says Dead Rabbit V2. It's basically a Dead Rabbit V1 that's been slightly altered. I'm being honest here, folks. This is up for review. This is up for review in a couple of weeks' time. And I was... Uh, I was looking at it and comparing it to the original Dead Rabbit. In essence the original Dead Rabbit RTA, the original one, and the Dead Rabbit V2 RTA d doesn't have a lot of major differences. If, if I was, because Billy's logo is on this, because there's Heathen's logo at the back, if I was Billy, I would have called this the SE, like the second edition V1, or the V1 SE, as a progression of the V1 tank, calling it the V2, because normally when you get tanks with a V2, I'm giving this thing a review and I've not even fucking reviewed it yet, but normally when you give something the V2 moniker, something has drastically changed with the design. Nothing's changed much with this. It's a damn good tank. I'm not dissing it for not being a good tank. It's a damn good tank, folks. A phenomenal tank when it comes to flavour, because I've got the black version of this, up at the studio, and I've run, I'm running the Peach Custard through it right now for the review that's coming up next week, I think, or the week after. It's a phenomenal tank, just like the original V1, but there's no difference in the flavour. 
absolutely no doubt. I'm not going to say any more because I'm going to fuck up the review for this. If I give the review for it now, you're not going to watch the damn video. But yeah, Dead Rabbit V2 RTA in stainless steel is also up for grabs. So this little lot is up for grabs for one lucky recipient next week. And in order to sign up for all of this, simply join the YouTube members, Patreon or Subscribestar before Sunday morning next Sunday because I pull all these names on the Sunday morning before I hit record to record the what's up on Sunday because all this what you're watching right now all of this has been recorded today um, I, well apart from the the first looks that was recorded on Friday but the babbly talky bit was all recorded today so as long as you sign up for Patreon subscribe star or YouTube members before Sunday morning your name is automatically thrown in for as long as you're a member just constantly thrown into the hat for as long as you remember. There's also added perks as well. There will be Patreon, YouTube member and Subscribestar only live shows starting up at the back end of this month going into August. And there's also going to be separate boxaways, private boxaways, specifically for different tiers on the Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube member system. That's all going to start rolling back in as we get further into the end of summer, beginning of autumn. So there's more perks and stuff underway and I'm actually in the middle of redoing the Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube member specific Teespring store while I'm redoing the Teespring store for Vaping with Vic and the relaunch of the UK Vape Show. Basically, I'm very busy right now. Very busy right now. It, sh it should have been stuff that I should have done during the lockdown, but I became lazy. I'll be honest. I, I chilled out and relaxed all the way through the lockdown. I did. Anyway. Oh. Ah. That is it from me, folks. The tea's ran out, so I need to go and make another one anyway. That is it from me, folks. As always, thanks for watching, and have a good one.